So we're going to start off with some basic neurological, biological, and psychological biases that we as a species have, that you have, that I have, that we're all kind of born with. And when you start to understand these biases, you also realize that, hey, these are obstacles that I'm going to need to fix if I want to make money trading. It's important to know what you're up against in the beginning so you know what you have to work with right off the bat. One of those biases that we have is the negativity bias. And this really has to do with evolution of our species. So up until about the 20th century, a lot of people would die um, just because of physical threats um, in the environment. And they could have been purely environmental climate based upon um, you know animals or predators we ran into. There were all kinds of things that we have wired into our brains that survival is the most important and what threatens our survival more a big tiger or a you know a, a plant in the environment that we rarely encounter there are things that because of how we evolved as a species and because these experiences in our environment had an impact upon our genes and our cells and how our nervous system was built we tend to as a whole give more weight to things that can harm us and affect our existence versus things that can help us. And in some sense, this kind of makes sense. But the thing about it is, is in today's age, the majority of things that threatened our existence before don't exist today or there's such a remote possibility. So this creates an inherent negativity bias. And the thing about it is it's kind of this self-reinforcing mechanism because when we have these experiences, they tend to stick in our brain and stick in our bodies and our nervous systems much stronger they reinforce them happening more. Whereas positive experiences, we tend to kind of brush these off. So you are more likely to remember a majority of trades that were losses or painful losses to you than you will great wins. That's the negativity bias in play. If you are in a trade that's up 100 pips, you got a 200 pip target, Every pip that all of a sudden that, that trade starts to pull back against you, you feel more intensely than every pip it goes in your favor. So that's an example of a negativity bias. And you can, if you start to think about this, you should be able to come up with a lot of situations and experiences that you've had that not only confirm this particular bias and experience, but also have an impact on our trading. If we are more likely to notice the negative than the positive, that's gonna have an impact on how we remember things. We have 500% more neurological real estate dedicated towards noticing the negative and the positive. That is going to affect your performance and your mindset. So try and start to think of ways that this, can ha this does already have a major impact upon your life. The next one is loss aversion. This is kind of an extension of the negativity bias. The main thing about loss aversion, and it's kind of the wrong wording for it in some sense, but this is the psychological term, which is that any sort of losses or negative or disadvantages that we experience in trading or in life are going to kind of, how could I say, impact us more than gains. So the energy and psychological benefit we get from gains is smaller than losses. And this creates this kind of natural byproduct that therefore we are going to avoid losses um, more than we will wins. And that actually leads to another, which is regret aversion. So you can see how just one psychological bias kind of starts to influence a chain reaction of other biases. Regret aversion is us avoiding a particular action for fear of taking a loss or fear of making a bad choice. So we have this aversion to the potential experiences of loss and the consequent regret we would get from that. So we create this aversion towards that. So just the negativity bias alone creates many other aversions. Another one is confirmation bias. So Confirmation bias is this propensity we have 
for kind of seeking out or looking for information that kind of confirms that we're right versus um, giving equal weight to evidence that might suggest that we're wrong or inaccurate in our views. And so we tend to look at information that says, hey, you're right, you're totally accurate on this, way more than we will look at something that's contradictory. And that creates a problem in trading. We need to look at all information equally. So if 50% of the information on our chart is supporting our trade idea and the other 50% is kind of invalidating it, we need to weigh those equally. But with confirmation bias, it could be a 50-50 balance in terms of variables or factors, but we'll look at the things that are saying, hey, you're right, and we'll weigh them more than we will the things that are saying we're wrong. So this is a very interesting bias that people have to be kind of very cautious around, not just in trading, but your life as well. Another bias that we experience is hindsight bias. So hindsight bias is where we look upon things that have happened to us in the past, trades that have happened to us in the past, mistakes that we've made. Um, and we look at them as like, oh, you know, that was predictable. Uh, you know, we sh that was predictable. We should have seen that coming. And the thing is, is that we're not really making this statement based upon the information we had at that time. We're making it based upon the information after the fact, which is kind of giving us information about the outcome. And that creates this kind of lens that distorts our version of what really happened. It's that kind of hindsight is always 2020, meaning that we can see it just as uh, back then as we do now. And that's just not reality. You know, we get new information. It's really easy to see things when things are correlated. But in trading, that's not often the case. There's a lot of missing information that we don't have. And so it's important that we don't look upon our past mistakes and be like, oh, this is obvious. We have to learn to be able to make the best analysis we can with the information we have at that time, because that's all we're ever doing in trading. We're not working with information in the future. So this is a super important bias to be aware of. And fear of missing out. So this is kind of like somewhat of an inversion to the whole loss aversion or regret aversion experience. Basically, if we see something happening and we suspect that it's going to lead to, you know, more bullish prices or more bearish prices on the chart, we kind of get this experience of, oh, shoot, we don't want to miss out on this. We need to take advantage of this because there's lost money on the table if we don't get in this. But the thing is, is that that can become an override experience to the point where we are more attached to not losing out on this potential money making opportunity and not thinking about well wait a minute where's the best time and place for me to get into this that's why retail traders are more likely to and especially nonprofit traders are more likely to chase trends in a very kind of unprofitable manner because they're more seduced by the idea of, oh, I don't want to miss out on this trade opportunity. And they put that on a higher pedestal than, wait a minute, where do I need to get in? Where's the optimal location I'm going to get in? And is this move over? You know, So there's a much different approach that a professional trader takes to this. So fear of missing out is a very important bias that you need to be aware of. So looking at all that, you can kind of see why mindset is really important. You know, I talked about in a prior video about how self-awareness is important. Well, self-awareness is going to help you identify which of those biases affect your performance the most, you know, which patterns repeat themselves the most. Trading is this very professional endeavor where, you know, if you think about like becoming a professional athlete, you know, let's say football player, you can you can start off at the, the club leagues, you know, or, uh, you know, and then work your way up to, you know, maybe scholastic competitive, uh, you know, uh, teams. And then you can move on to college and then to pro. And if you think about it, trading doesn't really have that. There's only one market. There's only the NFL. And so you have to jump in. And it's not that you're always competing with them, depending upon the market, like in the Forex market, you're not competing against institutional traders. It's not like your trade is being offset by a professional trader. 
So you're not really competing against anyone, but you are jumping into a very professional market where people who are highly trained are the ones who make money and the ones who are not trained well enough don't. And so, you know, you have to understand that that's what you're jumping into and it requires really the best versions of you or a version of you that's always getting better every single day, that's always growing, that's always challenging themselves, that's always taking themselves to task, that's always giving as much of their uh, 100% performance as they This is very much in contrast to what you do every day. If you work at a big company, yeah, you're competing against some people, but not everybody wants to um, really progress up you know, the corporate ladder to a certain degree. Not everybody's as competitive. Some people just want to have enough money to take care of their family and spend time with their family. So rising up in the corporate ladder isn't as important to them. So, you know, and regardless of whether you have an awesome week or a semi-awesome week or a bad week, by and large, you're still getting the same paycheck at your work. That's not how trading works. Trading takes a lot of the experiences you have around work, around making money, and it kind of turns it on its head. And so these are going to have an impact upon your mindset, upon your brain and your nervous system, because it's going to be forcing your brain and your nervous system to fire in ways that it normally doesn't or isn't trained to or isn't used to. So learning to trade takes time. There is a process that you have to go through that you shouldn't expect this to be completed in a couple months. You know, you should expect, you know, anywhere from six months to a couple years to really get this down. But, you know, if you can really commit for that period of time and do everything you need to do, the benefits of becoming a profitable trader outweigh any sort of career advancement that you could get in some new job, new career inside two years. The, the payoff and the upside is, is significantly better than you could at any sort of job. If you think about it, if you work for a company in two years, the chances of you being able to double your yearly income are slim. You can expect it to maybe happen less than 5% of the time. But in trading, that's a real possibility. And, and that's partially because you can make money while you're sleeping. You can have trades open while you're asleep. You can make money 24 hours a day. You can also, there's no limit to the amount of money that you can make in trading. There really is no limit to it. But in a job, someone else is determining your value and how much you get paid and your upside. They're never going to say you have the potential to make an unlimited amount of money here. That's just not going to happen with a company. But that possibility is with the market. And there's more ways to get there through trading than there is through a job. So... You have to understand that learning to trade takes time, but the time and investment to be able to work from home, to be your own boss, to set your own limits, to decide when you make money, um, what your value is, those are pretty valuable and they tend to supersede almost anything you could do in the real world with any sort of company. And you get to work from home in your shorts, so it's a pretty cool thing. Some of the other things about trading and why mindset's important is you're going to experience... Um, the psychological discomfort of variance and ambiguity and uncertainty. So we, if if I was to conduct an experiment and say, okay, I'm going to take 200 of you and I'm going to split you up into two camps. And the first camp, you're going to make $100,000 and it's going to be the same amount of money every single month. And it's going to come at the same time of the month. And it'll be very predictable. The second camp, you're also going to make $100,000. But... I'm not going to tell you exactly which months you're going to make money because some you're going to make money and some you're going to lose money. And I'm not going to tell you how much each month. Maybe one month you make 20000 Maybe the next month you lose five. i I'm willing to bet that 90 plus percent of you are going to choose the path of certainty when it comes to your income. Trading doesn't work like that. Trading is working on an uncertain ground. You can make money one month and lose money the next. And that tends to really mess with people's heads. Tends to, I'm willing to bet it'll mess with your head. There's a certain ambiguity about it that is so constant because it's out of our control that that tends to challenge our brain and how our brain works and how our mindsets work. You know, we'd rather work with certainty than uncertainty. We would rather work with clarity versus ambiguity. And then there's also the process of variance, which is that you could have a really good statistical edge in the markets, 
but that doesn't mean it's gonna work out the same. So if I am 54% accurate, technically that should mean out of every 100 trades, I win 54 and I lose 46, but you could go on a losing streak and because of the timing and everything, the next 100 trades, you might end up losing 50 plus trades, 60 plus trades. And what happens is there's variance within the numbers. It's not like a fixed thing that, okay, I'm 54%, so every 100 trades, I'm gonna win 54 and I'm gonna lose 46. That ignores the fact that the overall average of your trade should be that, but that doesn't mean it's going to be fixed within any set of 100 trades. There's variance in that. And that tends to really challenge people. I'm willing to bet you've experienced this. You've gone on losing streaks and been like, man, am I trading the right strategy? What's going on? Is this, you know, but then you go on a winning streak and you don't question it as much. That's variance. And without that, there is no profitability. If the market was completely fixed, there would be no profitability because everybody would know exactly what statistical edges there and they know exactly when to make decisions and when not to. So it'd all be dependent upon the people who control the market, not you. So the market is based upon these underlying principles of uncertainty, ambiguity, and variance that tend to really challenge us as people. Tend, I'm willing to bet you've found that experience directly. And so this is why mindset is important because you have to build certain psychological, neurological, and emotional skills to manage this so it doesn't take you off the reservation. Trading is also not a linear process. So it's not a process where if like, hey, if I stay for six months, I'm gonna get this good. And if I study for a year, I'm gonna get this good. That's not how it works. It's not like, it's not like if I go weightlifting at the gym that I can expect that with a certain amount of you know, effort and consistency in the number of days and the reps that I'm gonna be able to increase the weight and relatively do this at a, in a linear process. Trading is kind of more something where you're gonna experience a lot of ups and downs. You're gonna have times where you don't grow at all and you're gonna have times where you have explosive growth as a trader. And that linear, non-linear process is another reason why trading challenges you. And it's why your mindset is even more important. So it's super important to kind of understand these things and how they affect you. Um, we've talked about how trading is skill-based, not information-based, and we've talked about how consistency is key. You can see now why, based on all this, that with something that is so inconsistent or ambiguous or uncertain or variable, which is the markets, you being steady and consistent and staying in your seat the whole time and staying in the saddle is even more important than it is in the real world. This is why mindset.